Okay, good morning everybody. So this is a, a slight change of theme in this session. So this is how we classified CML 20, 25 years ago. The great majority of cases were of course B cerebral positive. We had this group of about 5% of cases that we used to call Philadelphia chromosome negative, BCR able negative CML. Now, of course, CML is defined as B cerebral positive disease only, so what's happened to all these cases? And we knew that they were very heterogeneous, so they've basically gone to different places within the WHO classification. A very small number have true CML. They have an atypical B cerebral transcript in the context of a normal carrier type. These cases are very rare, but they do, they do occur. Other cases, I think, are commonly gone to this group, myeloid lymphoid neoplasm of the eosinophilia, which I'll talk about, atypical CML, chronic neutrophilic leukemia, MDS MPNU. And many of these cases test positive for KIT D816V and may be more appropriately classified as systemic mastocytosis with an additional hematological neoplasm, such as atypical CML. So to focus then initially on this group of myeloid lymphoid neoplasms, and this is how the WHO define it, and the WHO is, of course, coming from a, a morphological perspective. So these are cases with eosinophilia and rearrangements of PDGFR A, PDGFR B, FGFR1, or PCM1, JAK2. So these are all fusion tyrosine kinases resulting from genomic rearrangements. Um, and it's not really surprising that with fusion tyrosine kinases, these work in a way that's analogous to bcr able. At least some of these cases have a very similar sort of disease. So this is just a, a summary of all the fusions that have been described in myeloid disorders. Uh, these are tyrosine kinases here in blue. So here's PDGFR A at 4Q12. Here's JAK2. 33 fusion partners known for PDGFR beta. 14 for FGFR1. And most of these are extremely rare, and most have only been described in single patients. They're not unique to myeloid disorders. Many of these crop up in, um, in a Philadelphia-like Philadelphia ALL as well, or occasionally in T-cell ALL. The WHO classification, to my mind, is rather odd because it excludes several other fusions, so now a total of 73. For example, ETV6 ABLE, uh, doesn't fit anywhere clearly within the WHO classification, but is clearly associated in most cases with a very CML-like disorder. There are other fusions for JAK2, so for example, BCR JAK2, uh, also BCR confused to FGFR1. There's a whole, whole range of different fusions here associated with myeloid disorders, very commonly, but not always with eosinophilia, uh, and often, but again, not always with a CML-like phenotype. And of course, these are both diagnostically and therapeutically very important. Um, imatinib or, or related TKIs is the standard of care for patients with ABLE, PDGFR A and PDGFR B to fusions. And there are uh, published literature exploring, and I'll show a couple of cases of uh, JAK2 inhibitors in patients with JAK2 fusions. Uh, Sunitinib for cases very rare with FLT3 fusions. And some response to panatinib in cases with um, FGFR1 fusions. And I'll just mention that there's a poster at this meeting exploring, which aims to explore a new uh, and hopefully better FGFR1 inhibitor in patients with FGFR1 fusions. So just briefly <coughs> to go through the most common of these fusions, and um, it's good to see Jan Kuhls here, who published this um, back in 2003. FIT101 PDGFR uh, alpha um, which, as I said, after BCR able is by far the next most common of these fusions shown in the previous slide. The initial prevalence in cases with um, query hypereosinophilic syndrome, with which this is associated, was, was suggested to be between about 20 and 50 percent. Um, now that many cases have been picked up, I think the, the, the ongoing instance is much lower. We're picking up well under 5 percent of cases referred to us that are positive. Almost all these cases are male, and we still don't understand. We've been looking at genetic bases for a, this male excess, uh, which is really very marked, more than 20 to 1 ratio males to females, but we don't understand that. Almost all the fusions I showed on the previous slide are associated with cytogenetic rearrangements, but this is cytogenetically cryptic in most cases that can be picked up with uh, fish or PCR-based techniques. 
And there are some interesting contrasts with this disorder with CML. So in contrast to CML, in patients with this fusion who progress to acute leukemia, the responses on imatinib are generally pretty good. And this data and some data in some of these other slides is, is from my colleague Andreas Reiter in, in Germany. So these are patients in chronic phase disease. These are patients in, in blastic phase, many of whom have been treated with TKI only. And in CML, of course, patients in blast crisis may show transient responses, but all will relapse. Some of these cases maintain apparently long-term remissions. Like CML, some of these patients can relapse with resistant disease that's associated with secondary mutations. Most commonly, this T674I mutation, which is directly equivalent to the T315I mutation seen in CML. And the outcome for patients who relapse with uh, resistant disease is, is generally not very good. And many in this series, uh, from, taken from uh, both the cases in Germany and published cases, Many of these have gone on to, to die, apart from patients who've been rescued with allogeneic stem cell transplantation. So this has perhaps tempered the idea of treatment-free remission in these disease, but, um, and, and to my knowledge, there are no systematic studies that have been done, but for various reasons, patients have been stopped. These are patients here who've achieved undetectable disease by PCR, shown by these yellow bars, who then stopped, and some of them maintain um, remission, the follow-up is not huge for a period of time, but then some go on to relapse. So broadly, on very small numbers, a, it looks like a similar picture to, to CML. PGFR beta rearranged MPN tend to have a much more overt myeloid phenotype, either looking like CML or uh, CML. Um, these cases are less common, and this is a, a series put together back in 2014. 26 cases treated with imatinib. These were very heterogeneous groups. Some had, some had been heavily pre-treated before, but there was a good follow-up. And the good news is, is that these patients do very well. So no a patient who achieved chromosomal remission or undetectable PCR for whatever fusion they had lost their response or progressed to blast crisis.